Okay, so just initially, um, one of the retreatants, uh, could you please go through what mantras you need for three days at your father's place? So what what I what I did there was um, when I was uh, helping out helping him out with his um, computer connections and whatnot, Wi-Fi, and his accounts and stuff. Um, I just used a I just used a very just a very simple one, which was Sankor. And I, I mean, I used that one for many many years. But the thing is that um, you'd be better off using the a Nietzsche principle because it's got more it's got more oomph um, behind it. It's got more um, say more energy, more a little bit more power, a little bit more say like letting go. And because the thing is, when you when you're doing when you're uh, when you're practicing Dhamma, you need to try to keep your mind actually in line with the uh, the teaching. Um, you know, you can you can meditate, you know, almost any way that you like to a degree, as long as, as long as you're following the major guidelines. But it's good to keep your mind, say, in line with, um, say, like reality principles, with the actual things that the Buddha was talking about when he talks about, um, you know, balance, you know, you know, balancing faculties and. Um, you know, without getting overly complicated, but you know, 37 enlightenment factors. Um, you know, um, there's a number of different aspects there, but whatever, whatever you feel comfortable when it comes to the um, a Nietzsche principle, you can just you know, just very, very, very little short ones. Like it could be things like even to say energy, energy is changeable, or um, it could be absolutely anything whatsoever you think about. Just keep in, initially, like it's good, it's good to. Um, Say so outside when you're at work or when you're around the family. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do any of the, any of the body-based um, practices unless you're actually comfortable with it, because you've got a situation where you do you're doing these um, slightly slightly more heavy. Uh, I wouldn't say abnormal, but they're they're not mainstream. They're not mainstream practices. And um, I mean, for myself, I don't. I hardly get affected. I hardly get any negativity or anything with them. But if you're you're in a situation where you're doing things like um, Things like, say, like skeleton or teeth or nails, um, and you know you're living in a household with your partner or even with children and whatnot. Um, it depends on your on your on your on your makeup because I know a Sri Lankan man who was doing the the 32 parts of the body, and um, he had th he had uh, he was married with three young daughters, and um, he was quite comfortable with it. You know, just even even within the household. Um, there was no um, irritation, you know, he wasn't getting irritated, annoyed by the kids. Um, but it's good, yeah, use to use uh, something which is like user friendly that you're, you're comfortable with, and um, you're, you know, you, you're reasonably at peace with. You don't, you don't want, as one of the other ladies mentioned, you don't want to do anything which will basically provoke or stir you up or bring up very, very strong um, emotions. Um, you don't, yeah, you, you want to do things which are user-friendly, reasonably smooth, keep you in a comfortable range and that you can do them, you know, you can do them maybe in the beginning every couple of minutes and then if you're able to, every maybe roughly every minute or so right throughout the day. Um, yeah, so definitely, I would definitely use the changeability because it's, it's got more, it's more reality-based and you'll, you'll tend to get better results with it than, than saying things like happiness or joy. You're using Pali, like particular Pali words in relation with um, those, you know, those particular mind states. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so specific examples, as as you, as I've mentioned, um, anything anything within the natural world, in biology, chemistry, um, natural sciences, um, anything that you see in the mind. But one of the Ladies mentioned that you know she was using this mantra: "Feeling is changeable," and then it, it broke up a, uh, um, it brought up a, a response, a very like strong emotion, um, uncomfortable emotion. So it's not it's not a bad thing. It, it really it just makes you aware of what's suitable and what's not. You know, if she if she did um, things like um, uh, you know the the the, the say like the soft and fluffy. This is another point here: the soft and fluffy, which is. That which is like easy to work with, which is not provocative, which doesn't give you any any trouble. I mean, it's a, all, all meditations. If you do them enough, if you do, you know you start winding it up like you know six eight hours a day, um, you're definitely going to get um, an effect. You're going to get an emotional 
um, psychological effect. You know, if we say, say your Pasimo, venerable Pasimo can do eight hours a day and he, and he maintains a, quite a good mind state. But once he starts bumping it up to say 10, which is a lot um, on a daily basis in retreat time, then he starts to get a little bit um, irritated, sometimes, sometimes annoyed if things, you know, uh, if, if people, you know, sort of create problems for him. So as you know, soft and soft and fluffy, you know, like easy, easy to work with. Um, you're, you're comfortable with it, and um, and if that, you know, the 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 soft and fluffy doesn't work so well, then you increase the pressure. You start you you can do you do things like um, just one just one body based mantra. It could be head hair, just one of those head hair, body hair, nails, teeth, skin, and then you'll see you'll see the the level of of, of the tranquility effect. The, the level the ability to induce peacefulness will increase. So you go from natural, you know, natural, very comfortable things um, that you like, and then if it doesn't work, you or it's not the res you don't get the results quick enough. Within, if you don't see it within days, you know, it's not it's really it's like too long. So I wouldn't give it. You know, if you're doing a particular mantra and you're doing it nothing less than one or two hours a day, and you do that for several hours a day, this one mantra per minute and you really don't feel it's satisfactory, then um, just use a little bit more um, oomph, a little bit more, um, say, force with the body-based practices, just, but just one. You know, keep yourself in a comfortable range, just one, and then give that a couple of days, and um, you, you definitely will see an effect without any doubt. And, and if you really want to see it roll, you, you, do, you do the five. But you've got, to, you've got to watch yourself. You've got to check the mind. And make sure you don't get any um, kind of negativity. You don't see it like things like anger. Um, you know, the monks that go, the monks go through this kind of stuff all the time, every day. You know, day after day. Um, all this, you know, this the kind of with the, with the up, sort of um, emotional ups and downs and different moods and all the rest of it. Um, but you, you really, in, you really need to do what actually works for you, and you're, you're in a comfortable range, and then you just keep it going for months, years on end if you've got the. Um, Ability. Okay, so, um, okay, so, um, uh, Tom, Tom recommended um, uh, a topic called letting go, and uh, you know we see that a lot in, um, so especially in books, you know, books by um, Buddhist teaching, you know, by lay monastic. Um, Dharma teachers, letting go, letting go. But you know, one of our ladies, um, her daughter, uh, passed away you know, quite some time ago. I think it was, must have been the youngest daughter with three older brothers. So um, you know, very, very um, emotionally. I mean, quite. I mean, really traumatic. So that took about a full twelve months just to come to terms with. But but as as she said, um, she mentioned to me that. You know, people keep telling her to let go, to let go, but she didn't know how to let go. And you just can't drop your daughter, you know, even after three months, you know. Um, I mean, it took, it took me about, oh, probably about six weeks to get over the worst of my father's death. So, you know, most, most people need at least 12 months. Even one of the uh, Sri Lankan uh, young ladies from the monastery drops um, in now and then. Um, you know, she lost her mum two years ago and she's still, still grieving. So. It all depends um, on your personal makeup, how sensitive you are, how close you are with mum and dad, um, and you know the, the, the what the, the kind of you know how what your meditation practice is like. Um, sometimes it can give you an ability to deal with things a little bit more easy, but it, it's not necessarily foolproof because you know, meditation does make you um, sensitive, emotionally sensitive. So um, it's very much a um, a personal. Um, perspective, you know, that experience. But, re but really, you know, if, especially with the Buddhist practitioners, after, I can, I can only speak for myself, I mean, after a full year, um, if, I was a, if I was emotionally, like, uh, still a mess, you know, after, after 12 months, um, it means that I'm basically not doing the work correctly. I'm not, you know, I'm not getting maybe guide, proper, proper guidance, or I'm not practicing in the correct manner because, um, I still can't deal with that mind state. So if I've, you know, if I've still got a major, I've still got major issues after one year. Um, the person may really need to look at what's happening, and because you know, you can get you can get um, these clinical professionals, people who specialize in uh, uh, what would you call it, grief and death, 
um, uh, councillors who are very, very good um, in this area and they've, they've seen it all. So that, that might be the kind of person you would refer to. So letting go um, can take, you know, if we look at it, I mean, what, 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 how does it actually affect you? If, if I say letting go, letting go, what does it actually mean? So, you know, we can, we can use, say, descriptions like letting go means, say, like non-attachment, non-clinging, um, the ability to, to sort of weather conditions, the ability to, um, what was the word, to um, accord with life's um, ups and downs and, you know, not having a, a personality which is incredibly, like, stiff and tight, inflexible. Um, you know, so it's a person who is psychologically, they're not trying to... Um, what's the right word? The, 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 it's, it's like the sense of self uh, in one way doesn't become a problem because if the sense of self um, is quite strong, then you're going to get your fingers burned at some point because it's going to jump in and it's going to say, oh, this is not fair or I should be treated better or I should uh, have more rights or, or more preferences or, or you know, I should be a millionaire and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know... The, the sense of self will, in, in, a, in a major way will be the source of a lot of your, uh, both, both your joy and, and your suffering, your joy and pain as a, as a human being. So what, what we're aiming at, I mean, especially with the, the um, monastics, you have to move away from extreme, you know, like extreme happiness, from extreme pain. The, the, Buddha, the Buddha talked about bringing the mind back to the center point between, um, say, like indulgence and self-mortification, where you're just sort of like torturing yourself or, um, you know, be uh, in, in a state of like suffering on whatever level, you know, whatever induced that particular state. So, and letting go, what's, you know, what's the test? You know, it's like, it's like um, if I, if I, if we put someone, you know, somebody, th somebody feels that they've let go of this and that, you know, they've let go of... I saw an example the other day. One of the, oh, one of the monks one of the monks said that um, he had let go of his daughter. And, and I, said, I, f I said, I find that hard to believe. And because you know, people, people can just talk the talk. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything, really. You've got to put it to the test. So, and I said, I said how would you feel if your, your daughter passed away? And he said, he said, he said, I would hardly be affected. He said, we have, we have this understanding that um, if one of us, you know, whichever one dies first, that the other will take care of the responsibilities and duties and look after the ceremony and, and whatnot. Um, but the thing is, you, you can see quite clearly, I'm not being like, um, what's the right word? Um, oh, I can't think of the right word to describe it. Um, um, so like critical, critical for the choice of better words. Um, but the thing is that, you know, you, you can't really see how much a person has let go until you actually, until they're under pressure, until you put them to the test. So, you know, if, if it's like somebody says, oh, I'm not, I'm not attached to my, um, I've got a very nice phone, it's, the phone's like two thousand, two and a half thousand dollars, but I'm not really attached to it. Well, well why don't we just take it away for, for three or six months and then, and then we'll see how you feel about it. So... Um, you know, you're looking at like extreme examples like that, but you know, we, from my perspective, I just, I don't go, I don't go, um, uh, what's the word? I don't go getting in people's faces and telling them this and telling them that. Um, you know, it's not, it's not really my, my job. Um, you know, people, people, you know, they have their, their own makeup, their own karma. All you can really do is lead by example. You can guide people. Um, you can, you know, make an effort to be an example, but that's that's for myself. That's all I'm prepared to do. I'm, I'm not going to. Some you get some people who want to get in your face and they want to tell you this and tell you that, and you know they get angry and they get revengeful and and all this kind of stuff. Um, but you just drive yourself nuts with that kind of um, kind of approach, and it, it shows just how no matter how smart they are, it shows just how much they've let go by just how they react when they're under just a little bit of pressure. Um, or if I, you know, if, I, if, I, if I deliberately provoke you, I stir you up, or I start pushing your buttons, and then you just go completely off the handle and start shouting in my face, then I know exactly how much you've let go of. So, you know, you're looking at extremes here. For, for me, I'm not interested in, the, in that kind of um, 
approach with people. People, they have to move at their own, their own pace, their own speed. And, and for people who are in, who are in the abbot's position, um, you know, it's not an easy one. You have to deal with a lot of stuff, um, not just your own, but dozens and dozens and dozens of other people with multiple um, responsibilities. So if you're even, even if you're not particularly stable or you might be, um, uh, can be quite hostile or even revengeful at times, um, that, you know, if you're able to hold that, that job together, the abbot's position looking after a, a monastery and community, you know, I take my hat off to you, even though I don't particularly, um, I'm not particularly thrilled about the, your, your personality, certain aspects of your personality. <laughs> so, um, so, so how, how, how do we, how do we, how do we develop it? How do I, how do I manage to develop a sense of letting go of non-attachment? So that, that similar principle is coming up again, the sense of self, the stronger, the stronger my views and opinions on absolutely anything whatsoever in the universe, uh, there's going to be a potential there for someone to upset my, my apple cart. So if I have, to, to give you an idea, I was in, um, this was oh, ages ago, say roughly about 12 months back, we were in town, um, we were running around all afternoon, so we stopped in, you know, we, um, a little bit of um, frivolity, we went to, um, to Dome for, for coffee and there was a very nice um, African, um, young African couple Having having coffee together, you know, you could see you could see they were, um, you know, just almost either newlyweds or um, you know, boyfriend girlfriend. Um, very nice um, ambience between them, and and they were just talking quietly, you know, with each other. And there was a family of of um, what would you call them? These people, um, not rednecks. Um, so the, the people who live in um, in the more, say the more say poor to working class suburbs of. Um, uh, of Perth, you know, like you like um, what's the what's the what's the what's the word to describe that? Bogans, exactly. About, yeah, family of, of bogans. Um, but and I can only speak for one person because you know the, the the rest of the family are okay. But the 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 oldest male there because there was young um, some young kids as well. But the old the old the the fa it looked like the father, and he was wearing his you know he's a big big guy wearing a flannelet shirt. Just looked like you know one of these um, country hit rednecks from out the back of Whoop Whoop, and um, and he was gla glaring, like glaring at these young this young couple, you know very nice young couple. You could see good people. You know you only had to look at them to know that they were a very nice young couple, probably starting off together in life. And this guy was glaring at them, and I thought I thought I thought you go over there, and I'll go over there, and I'll I'll, I'll ring I'll tell you I'll ring the police straight away or I'll get the staff to ring the police and then we'll get them to talk to you. You know, this, you, you know, this is you, you, probably nothing probably would have happened, but you, you get this kind of, it's, all, it's almost like this underlying resentment and, and um, I wouldn't say maybe even a little bit of anger or even hate. You know, the, these, these um, you, got, you get the, from people from say some of the African states and, I, and I've, and I've chit-chatted with a, you know, a, like a number, you know, in, with Uber and uh, you know, around about. And they're very, very nice people, but then you, you get these, um, you get the, these sort of like, more like bogan redneck um, type, type characters. And, and some of these people, they, they, hate, they hate these people, even though they've, they've never harmed them. And some of these people from the African states, they've come from war-torn, war uh, uh, you know, what would you call it? War-torn like battle zones, you know, with guerrilla warfare just going on all, you know, all, all around them. So, and um, so, you know, and they come to this country and they're very, you know, they're very pleasant and, um, uh, you know, they're even socially, they're, they're friendly and, and uh, you know, they smile like um, any decent human being would. And, um, and I thought, yeah, I thought they're, they're a great addition to, to you know, the, the communities in, um, um, in Perth, you know, but, um, but naturally some people may, may not like them. They don't like the skin colour. They don't like where they come from, you know, all this kind of... Um, Nonsense. So, so you see very clearly, you know, that you, you've got almost like, like a, a racist um, um, undertone. And um, but but the thing is, with the individual, you're looking at a, a conditioning process, person who's quite attached to their views. Um, but one thing I see, even if, say for example, with my mother's um, uh, nursing facility, there's a lot of um, the vast majority of the female staff are, are Asian, and they've got quite a, a number of girls from the or women, you know, say women from the African states. 
uh, working there, and, and they're quite, um, you know, they're quite they're friendly and sociable, and they're, you know, the vast majority, especially with the, uh, the, the management, the nursing staff, um, very good people, persons, you know, they, they can get along with almost, almost anyone. Um, so, you know, so you're looking at, the, you know, with personality, that kind of um, flexibility where they don't necessarily, because they're mixing with so many different types, even though, even though they're projecting their core personality, they're very, you know, they're very accommodating, very spacious. Um, they tend to, you know, they tend to like people. Um, they, they haven't got this kind of racist, discriminative um, kind of mentality. So it's, it's, it's like, um, yeah, that kind of people person where they're not so quick to, to, to judge, to, to judge others. And, and it's, an indi it's an indication of just how free the mind is because if, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm a bigot, if I'm a bigot and a racist, that, that's just a basis for me to suffer and hate and feel anger towards some people who are completely innocent and, um, and won't harm me till the day I, I leave this earth. So it, it's, a, it's a really nonsensical, it, it's just a, um, it's a bit of a, um, it, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever to, to have like really strong views on people that you don't even know. And so, but, but in, in a sense, you know, the um, personality, uh, personality view, the strong sense of self will always get you into trouble um, eventually, you know, it's, it, in, 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 a, in, a broad, in a broad sense, um, because, there, because things won't go your way, you know, as, as we see, life is, is constantly changing ar around us and, uh, you know, we're meeting different people, um, different environments and, um, you know, all sorts of, um, a number of things happening. And, 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 if you, if, and if you think you can control absolutely anything whatsoever, I mean, you're just, you're just kidding yourself. Um, you can't even control your own body. You know, you have to eat when you're hungry. You have to go to the bathroom um, when, when the need uh, arises. You know, you, you, have to, you have to shower every day, um, you know, look after, you know, just um, maintain, um, uh, you know, good, good personal hygiene, grooming, um, uh, and whatnot. All, you know, all these, all these things are, 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 like, necessary. So, um, you know, that principle where say the, the, the letting go is the, the test will be is how, uh, how attached you are to absolutely anything, whether it's your views and opinions to certain people, uh, this and that. You can, you can there's, no, there's, no, there's no harm in having attachments if you have a sort of a reasonably, you know, uh, say good perspective. Um, you know I, know, I know people who have very strong attachments to, to things like, um, uh, it could be something like social work, charity work, but the thing is, and they want, they want, they need things to be done a certain way, um, with process and, and whatnot. But the thing is, they get very, very good um, results. So you can have a situation where a person is very attached to uh, a certain mode of activity or a certain way of doing things, but the results are still wholesome and are still um, effective. So you know, so it's not to say that none, you know that attachment is a um, is a not uh, what would you call it? Um, uh, say attachment is not a good thing, or is not um, a, a conducive thing because um, in human society it may be it may be quite quite necessary. Um, you know, you know, throughout human society we have all these rules and regulations with um, the government departments, with the tax office, with the banks, and and. Um, um, pension funds and all the, every, anything you can possibly think of within um, the uh, uh, say government um, bureaucracy and 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 all these minor uh, facilities which are connected um, with that. So every single one of us um, have to abide by the social rules um, and norms. But you know we still have a, our, our personal freedom, so we have to we have to um, um, what's the right word? So I wouldn't say toe the line, but we have to approach things from you know within a certain uh, within a certain framework uh, dynamics uh, what the government expects of us what the you know what uh, organizations expect of us what um, you know, the, the the people who who charge us for our bills for water and, and things so you know there, there are expectations that we have to uh, to meet and which are quite necessary you know um, just living say living within human society but um, so, so how, I mean, how, how do I work with it? I mean, you know, with the, the tools, what, I mean, what kind of tools am I going to use with letting go? So w when you're looking at the, the, the peak level, 
um, that um, things, things like you know, the, med the meditation and especially contemplation, it's going to be very difficult for me to let go of, of anything if I don't really understand um, myself to a reasonable degree. How can, how can I possibly let something go if I don't understand the process in which it takes place? So what you do, say for example you have a strong attachment, um, I mean one of our, without going into um, detail, one of our people, one of our community members um, wants to come to the monastery long term and his wife, uh, I mean she was just crying profusely, just refused to, um, she said, you know, it's just straight out, she, you know, she, she will absolutely not let him go, but he, know, he knows that um, he's, he's got this opportunity uh, the children are, are, have grown up, and um, he, you know, he really wants to give it his uh, his best shot. But but she's not ready yet. She's not ready to um, both to let him go, and she may not be ready for that kind of commitment with the past. But he is. So, um, but the thing, the bottom line is that the the letting go. It's really you know, So your wisdom faculty has to come into play. You it, it has to understand the process from the first time it arises to the time that it subsides um, because um, you know, that, yeah, just that same thing. You can't possibly let go of anything you know, significant if you don't understand um, what you're going through. And so it's the same thing, you know, it's like, like I always mention this, you know, with the walking and sitting, you know, you, you know do, the, do the peaceful meditation and then go straight to wisdom after five minutes and explore and understand things because it, when you do that you increase energy and it increases the, the, the depth and the quality of the meditation. You, know, you, don't, you, just don't, you don't lose anything at all, you only gain when you do that, when you reflect for maybe 60 seconds or two minutes and then go back, you know, you, 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 you'll, you'll actually see it, you'll, you'll see an increase in energy depth with the meditation when you move back and forth uh, like, like this. But um, you know, there can be things like uh, renunciation, say for example if I'm attached to, you know, like many, 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 um, it could be material, material things, you know, you can, you can make an effort to renounce it. So for example, you've got a kuti, you've got a kuti like full of stuff, you've got a house full of stuff um, that, you know, you can maybe just every day, just one, you know, just one item per day. It could be a pen, it could be, um, oh, it could be anything, it could be a piece of paper, it could be a, a book, like an old book on the shelf. Um, I mean, maybe an old, it could be something significant like an old color television, you could give it to charity. Um, so, you know, and so, you know, renun renunciation, maybe possibly sim simplicity, simplifying your, your life, which can help you with, the, with letting go, you know, minimizing the amount of duties, responsibilities that you've got to take care of. Um, what else? Yeah, so yeah, simplifying, streamlining, things like, like bank, you know, bank accounts, uh, debit cards. Um, the way you pay your bills, you know, you, and um, you know, amalgamating things, you know, with um, payment plans and all the rest. Um, what else? And and having the kind of the kind of attitude, you know, having a, you know, it's it's not it's a it's a um, having a reasonably easy, you know, like an easygoing mentality, not feeling that you you have to control everything or things have to be um, a, a certain way, you know, it's it's um. You know, it's just it's just not possible. So you just it's, my my mentality is just to make the best of of what's happening at that particular uh, time because um, you know the 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 experience that you're going to go through um, can just change from one minute to the next. You know, people's moods can change from one minute to the next. So nothing is stable, nothing's reliable. And this is why this Anicca principle gives you um, just a little bit more sp over time. You can get months and years. You, you know, a bit more. Um, uh, so, uh, like accommodating uh, sp space uh, uh, in the mind, uh, the ability to accept and um, not to, to put, you know to grab things and push things away. Um, the more the more you know the more lighthearted you are, the more spacious your mind. Um, you're you're able to move through life, you know the ups and downs of life, with a uh, say like a, a kind of philosophical philosophical calm. Um, in some sense, you know, meditation will give you will give you the, the real understanding, um, st you know, emotional stability to um, a degree. But for people in the world who are not Buddhists, who are not meditators, and you see this in, eld in elderly people, that they, they just don't get completely traumatized when things go wrong because, you know, they're 70, 80, 90 years of age, 
they've seen it all. You know, some of these people, half, half of them have done it all. They've been all, you know, they've travelled, they've done this and done that. Um, you know, they you know, put their mortgage and all the rest of it. Um, and they, they, you know, they've got this kind of uh, stability. It's almost like a, um, just, just like watching on, you know, watching, just, you know, living their life and watching on and just watching things move and change. Um, people coming in and out of their lives. Um, so, you know, they, it's like, it's like you, over time, over years, over many years, you don't, you just don't go to extremes. You don't start, you don't jump up and down and start screaming when something, something terrible happens and then, or if something really, really good happens, you don't completely lose yourself in, um, in happiness and, and, and joy. You know, you, you see elderly people, they, they've got this, this, um, it's almost, you know, it's like, which comes through age and experience. It's like a, like a mild detachment. They just don't get blown away the way that young people do when you're, when, when you're looking at extremes of both happiness and pain on, on any level you can possibly think of. Okay, so better do some metta meditation. We've got, to, uh, we, we've got to finish by 15, huh? Do you want 15? Yeah, I don't know, what are we looking at? Okay, 2.15. Uh, yeah, we can't go past 2.15. All right, we'll do a quick one. Um, all right, all right. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on a very specific area of your life. Um, you know, something that, you know, so for, you know, you're being like your own coach, your own life coach. And, you know, look at the, a particular area that you might be slightly, um, what would you say, like, I wouldn't say weak, slightly, uh, where you need a boost, you know, you, you, a particular area of, of yourself, um, your personality, which needs a, a bit of a boost, which needs some positivity, some support. It could be something like, um, say, for example, if I'm a, a, a fearful, it could be a shy, fearful person, lacking confidence. Um, I, could be, I could say something like um, loving kindness, compassion, May, um, may I be confident, um, could we say confident, <laughs> may I be confident, fearless, and, um, and uh, could we say like at ease with, um, mm -hmm. with the people around me. So, you know, as a, as a, just as an example, so um, you can design the formulation of your choice, and we use both, uh, say, like love and kindness, compassion together, well, you know, well wishing. And um, so just choose the words which are suitable for you. And we'll do, let's see, we'll probably spend, because we, let's see, 15, or maybe we'll do four or five areas, or three, is 15. All right, roughly a couple, maybe a couple of minutes each maximum. So, um, so choose that area and um, give yourself a, a boost. May I, may I be such and such. And just do it slowly, mentally, slowly, uh, and continually in a very, very relaxed way.
now I want you to choose your best friend and whatever, whatever good things, whatever good qualities you wish for that person, may uh, say, my, may my best friend be such and such, rich, wealthy, um, healthy, fortunate, whatever you, whatever you think is, is, is good for that person, may my friend be such and such, and do that for the next um, two minutes. Now I want you to choose a, a, a neutral person, a person that you have um, neutral feelings towards. Could be just an associate at work, someone you know you know in passing, and whatever good qualities, um, good fortune uh, you wish for them, just uh, adjust the formulation. May that particular person, that neutral person, uh, be such and be such and such. Have you know, could have could be like, like you know opportunities good health, could be absolutely anything which you, you think is important for them.
Okay, so now I want you to choose a person that you don't particularly get along with. Uh, they don't have to be a, 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 an enemy, just a person that you have differences with, you know, don't get along so well. And then whatever good qualities you wish for that person, uh, just adjust the formulation accordingly. You guys have anything incredible to say before we head off and do our chores and bits and pieces? No trouble at all. It's been um, it's been a ball. <laughs> <laughs> now it's been great. I mean, the weather's been fantastic and. Um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. I, I probably, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm glad. Again, as long as you guys get something out of it, that's the um, the main thing. We've got fantastic facilities here, support, and the um, uh, the you know the crew, the kitchen crew, and and um, people helping to organise and clean. So it's all uh, it's pretty fantastic dynamics overall. Thank uh, to, uh, Tom and Di and all the guys who were helping out. It's fantastic, fantastic job. Okay, is there, any, is there anything you guys, Tom and I, want to say before we, we head off? Anything we need to, to say before we, we split? Yeah. <laughs>